Yeah. Listen, I'm listening to a 49 er rush. Niners all day. That's brain sits home, baby. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. I love it, man. It's time for the 49ers Rush Podcast. Here's your host, John Chapman. All right, welcome to another episode of the 49ers Rush Podcast. I'm your host, John Chapman, and man, we got a big one. Uh, the 49ers schedule is out. Uh, will it stay intact exactly as is? Who knows? But we've got some stuff to digest and to look through. We knew the opponents. We knew who the 49ers were going to be playing, but now we know when, where, um, <laughs> how we get to watch, what time it's at, all those different things. So really excited to jump into this. And uh, as always, thank you. Shout out to the Countdown crew. Uh, you know, everybody, depending on where you are listening, just want to say thank you for joining us. I love seeing those hashtag CCs there. And again, if you don't know what that is, um, we are going to be giving away stuff at the end of every single month. Uh, to the countdown crew, the people that can jump on live, um, and just say what's up, hashtag CC, uh, during the first 30 seconds. So whether that's on the Hot Mic app, which we are broadcasting live on there right now, um, or if you're on YouTube, or if you're on Periscope, it doesn't matter. Uh, we want to get our engagement up. That's what's key. So we're going to go through. We're going to talk about the 49ers schedule, and I want to do it a little bit differently. Everybody's doing their win-loss projection. I don't want to do that. I want to rank the toughest games to the least toughest games out there and pay attention to why that is and what that looks like. So that's the plan there. Um, so we're going to go through game by game. And, you know, there's a couple things that stand out whenever you kind of step back and look at the roster or look at the schedule. It's interesting for several reasons. One. The 49ers have the most primetime games of any team, five. Uh, not a shocker, you know, uh, they were in the Super Bowl and they have the best-looking quarterback in freaking NFL history. Good Lord. Uh, you know, George Kittle, the names are out there. Bosa, go on and go on and go on. Like, it makes sense. So you get five primetime games, most in the NFL. And another thing that I thought was really weird, only two... 10 a.m. kickoff Sunday morning. Just two. And both of those happen weeks one and two. So right after the first two weeks of the season, there are no more games that have a 10 a.m. kickoff. So for those of you that just hate that early game, well, guess what? <laughs> the 49ers are going to be on TV, and you're going to be able to see a lot of those games uh, no matter what. So really excited about that. Now, let's step back and look at just strength of schedule and what that looks like. Now, there's Lots of different ways, okay, to measure strength of schedule. Now, if we just look at the 2019 win-loss record of all of our opponents, um, the 49ers have the fifth toughest schedule. But that, again, that's based off a 2019 win-loss. Teams change. Obviously, we understand that. And it, that makes sense because every single team that finishes first, you play the first place finisher of those divisions that you kind of go over and uh, that you play across the league. So uh, they, they do that for a reason. I kind of like that they do that. Now, if you look off of the Vegas odds for the 49ers opponents and you do win totals for all 16 teams, then the 49ers are right in the middle. Again, based off of the money on what team's records are going to be, they are 16th in the NFL. So right smack dab in the middle. So it's not too it's not a difficult schedule. You know, I, I, I glance back at last year's and this year's, I, I really don't think <laughs> we're playing a much harder schedule. I, I just don't think that it, it is there. Now we have seven games against playoff opponents from the 2019 season. Uh Seattle twice, so that counts as two. So six different opponents, seven total games. The Bills, the Packers, the Eagles, the Patriots, the Saints. So that's it. I mean, half of our games are going to be against over half of our games are going to be against teams that didn't even make the playoffs last year. So, and probably my favorite thing about the entire 2020 49ers schedule, we play one team coming off of a bye week. You know, if you look at the 2019 season, it seemed like every other week we were turning around playing an opponent that had more time to prepare and to rest before they played us. 
Uh, that is not the case. The NFL did the 49ers a huge schedule here, or a huge favor here, because it, one opponent, and that's week eight versus the Patriots, uh, they come off a of bye and they play us, and that's it. Other than that, no team has an ad- added advantage with time or rest over the 49ers. So uh, the 49ers, if we flip that over, the 49ers will have two separate games where they have more time to prepare for the opponents. And that's against the Saints, which is huge, and that's against the Rams. So th- th- those are going to be some very important games, one of them being a division opponent and the Rams, who, you know, I think it's the 49ers and the Rams and everybody else in the NFC. So uh, that's what we're going to see there. Now, if you do have questions um, and if you're throwing a, that stuff up there, uh, please tag me on that. And once we get through the schedule, once we get to the end of the episode, we'll go back through the chat and make sure we get to as many questions as possible. And again, Cannot say thanks enough for listening. Um, it's awesome. I, I, I love the support and the positivity that you guys bring. And wherever you are listening, share this podcast. Share it. Uh, hit the up button. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. We need you guys back. Uh, this is your podcast. Uh, help it grow. And the best way by doing that is, again, sharing it and hitting that like button. That's huge. So let's go week one. Okay, and we're going to look at a couple things for every single game. So week one is versus the Cardinals. We open at home. Haven't done that in three years, so that's nice. Sunday, uh, September 13th at 1.25 p.m. against the Cardinals. It, it, it is weird that the 49ers have a divisional opponent week one because, you know, with the whole COVID and everything else, if something does break down, those early weeks are going to be the ones that are going to be problematic. So, but anyway, the Cardinals, man, I don't think many people like the Cardinals as much as I do. And what we're going to do with each opponent, I ranked each one difficulty one through 16. Okay. Now, just because I rank them or if I say a game's tough, that doesn't mean I think the 49ers are going to lose. That's not what that means. What it means is it's tougher than the other matchups. I have this as our ninth toughest game. Okay, now, where are the Cardinals in terms of the NFL? You know, my power rankings that I did myself for all 32 teams, ranked all teams 1 through 32, I have the Cardinals right in the middle. I have them at 17th in my own power rankings. Now, the Cardinals, it, it, I had them higher. I had them at 12, but I had them over so many playoff teams, and I'm just like, man. I think the Cardinals are going to be much better this year. I think that they could finish number two in the NFC West. I really do. But they haven't proven it. Their coach hasn't proven it. Their quarterback hasn't proven it. Their defense was trash last year. So uh, they've got to show, obviously, DeAndre Hopkins. They had a great draft. All those things are great. But we saw this with the Browns last year, too. Teams that haven't been able to win, they have to learn to win. That's a huge hill to climb. Um, so I have the Cardinals week one as the ninth toughest game, uh, and we're going to see them again on the road. And you can tell the difference that I have just with that. And we'll, uh, we'll wait on that one. Week two, uh, we travel, man, all the way to the East coast. And again, another favor because the 49ers have back to back games at at MetLife stadium, um, in New York week two, they play the jets week three, they play the giants. So they're going to stay out there, and they're already trying to figure that out. Kyle Shanahan's already been on the record saying they're looking into venues that they can stay out there for two weeks. Um, So let's focus on week two, the Jets. This is my 14th (laughs) toughest game on the schedule, which is crazy to say to have a road game ranked that high. But um, I just don't think the Jets are very good. They're my 28th team in my power rankings. And I really do think that this is a great favor for the 49ers because you're getting early road games out of the way. Now, if we jump back to 2018, okay, let, let's, let's just forget about 2019 for a second. The 49ers were awful. They were so bad <laughs> on the East Coast. I, I think uh, Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch were 1-8 before last year, uh, traveling to the East Coast. They just couldn't win out there. But And so you don't ever want to take a game for granted um, and just say whatever, but the Jets are a bad team. Adam Gase is a bad coach. We, we dodged a bullet with that one. I know there are a lot of the faithful that wanted Adam Gase as their guy. I just don't see this as a very difficult game. It's a 10 a.m. kickoff, which kind of sucks, you know, traveling all the way across the coast. But the good thing is this, the 49ers are going to be out there for a long time because week two, 
right after that, you play in the same stadium. Um, <laughs> next, you got at New York Giants. And so this is my 13th ranked game. So I have two road games in my four easiest uh, scheduled games of the season, which th- this is just a testament to how bad these teams are. Now, they're young teams and you know newer coaches with their teams who haven't got their guys in place yet young quarterbacks you know you're facing Sam Darnold week 2 you go play Daniel Jones week 3 um you know it's it's going to be interesting what it what it's going to look like the giants are my 22nd um power ranked team so it, again not a complete team you get to see Saquon that's going to be fun we get to see 49ers great Caden Smith the tight end <laughs> that's going to be fun but I don't think any of those games are going to be that tough for the 49ers and if you're looking at the schedule it's going to be very similar to last year you know you got the Cardinals Jets Giants you jump out to a 3-0 lead you know you win these games they're very winnable games you know the Cardinals definitely gave the 49ers a tough to go at it both times in 2019 but very winnable games especially opening at home versus the Cardinals so you jump out to a 3-0 lead and just start we've seen how the 49ers operate once they get up and once they they have the lead they maintain that then we get to week four and this is a tough game Travel all the way back home after the you know East Coast trip, and we get the Eagles at home. This is the eighth most difficult game. I have the Eagles at 15th in my power rankings, and this is going to be a fun game. Now, it's number eight, but believe you me, the Eagles can beat anybody in the NFL when they're on. The problem is they're just not always on. Uh, it's just it's not really who they are. This is going to be a Sunday night football game, so this is October 4th at 5.20 p.m., uh, Pacific time. All these times are Pacific time. Uh, Sunday night football. So that's going to be a lot of fun because, you know, you're going to get Carson Wentz and all them. They're traveling. You know, they're doing the opposite of what we're doing. They're going East Coast all the way over. And so that's going to be a fun game. And again, that's my that's the the middle kind of median or the mode, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is the tipping point, right? Because here's the deal. The Eagles is a very winnable game. You know, they went 9-7 and seven last year, but they won <laughs> their division. Uh, so say what you want for that, but this is the middle game. And you're playing against a team that seems to be in the playoffs every single year, not that far away from a Super Bowl victory. But uh, it, it's going to be a fun game. Week 4 is by no stretch. And I don't think you'd say this about any game in the NFL. It's just a gimme. It, it's not there. But week five, uh, you stay at home again and you get the Dolphins. And so whenever you're looking at just the first five weeks of the 49ers schedule, you got Jets, bottom dweller team. You got Giants, bottom dweller team. You got Dolphins, bottom dweller team. The schedule favors so good for the 49ers to start. So good. Uh, Worst case scenario, you're looking at week five. Three and two is the worst case. That is awesome. Um, the Dolphins, Dolphins traveling all the way across the country. This is my 15th ranked game. It's the second easiest for the 49ers. And I actually have the Dolphins kind of high on my power rankings, 23rd overall. Uh, you remember last year when they tanked, <laughs> they actually won a bunch of games uh, down the stretch, which was hilarious. So even though they were trying to lose last year, they went 5-11. and 11. Um, So I think Miami, they have improved dramatically. And one of the things that would be interesting, you could make the argument that the Dolphins have the best cornerback tandem in the entire NFL. So uh, not going to be an easy game, but it's going to be an easy game. (laughs) I'm lying to myself right there. Week six, we stay at home. We get the Rams with our second divisional matchup. I have this as our 12th most difficult team. I am low on the Rams. I am so low on the Rams. They're my 20th team. When you look at adjusted power rankings, I, I just I don't respect them. They have so many holes on their roster. They go out and they draft running backs. They still haven't signed uh, Jalen Ramsey. They're five million dollars in the hole for the salary cap. I, I just I, I think the Rams are they're destined to be a bottom dweller team, and that could come back and haunt me. I don't care. Uh, I just don't see it. So this is my twelfth ranked team, despite it being in our division. Now after that, okay, here we go. This game is a a surprise for me because uh, week seven, you travel across the country and you go play the Patriots on the road. And as I said before, New England Patriots are coming off a bye week. They're going to have two weeks. Bill Belichick's going to have two weeks to prepare for the 49ers. Now, the Patriots team is very, very good. Their quarterback position, giant question mark. They have a great offensive line. They have a great defense. Um... 
I have this ranked as the fourth toughest uh, matchup for the for the year. It's a top fiver for me. And, you know, I have the Patriots at 16, but I'm telling you right now, I don't like the way that it's set up. I'm not saying the 49ers are going to lose this game. It's very winnable. Every game for the 49ers is winnable. They're, they're that top tier of a football team. They have so much depth, even if injuries take place, which they will, it's the NFL. They're going to be favored in almost every single game, maybe two. I don't think that the 49ers will be favored at Seattle, and I don't think they'll be favored at the Saints. Every other game, they're probably going to be favored. Um, so it, just because I talk about a tough game, that doesn't mean I think the 49ers are going to lose. So the Patriots Week 7, that's my fourth toughest game. Again, Belichick having all that time. It's a Sunday game, 1.25 p.m. And I'm, I'm telling you right now, it just looks like one of those games that could be a trip game because guess what? After Week 7, you got to travel to Seattle. So the early part of the schedule was fine. Okay, the first five weeks is awesome. <laughs> you couldn't ask for better. This little chunk here gets fun because you have division opponent in week six versus the Rams. Then you travel to the Patriots, which even though Tom Brady's gone, they're still the Patriots. Then you travel to at Seattle. Okay, week eight. Then you got the Packers. Then you got at Saints. So this one through five, cake. Six through ten, tough as hell. Now, does that mean I think they're going to lose them? No. <laughs> so I already see some of the comments. Uh, so hold on. But whenever you look at this, and this is my number one game of the whole entire season at Seattle. <coughs> Excuse me. This game is going to be tough just because it's always in Seattle. Now, Dre Greenlaw, who is CEO of Seattle, uh, he has dominated them every both times they played last year. And... As long as Russell Wilson's there, that's going to be a tough game. So this is my number one most tough game. Um, Seattle's my ninth ranked team uh, in my power rankings, but man, they just keep doing stuff. Um, they're in the playoffs every damn year. Russell Wilson just carries the team. Uh, they don't have an edge presence. You know, Jadavian Clowney still hasn't signed. We'll see what happens with that. I hope they overpay him personally, but... Seattle just finds a way uh, to always be competitive. So I think this is our number one. Week 9 versus the Packers. I have this as our 11th toughest game, which I just can't get out of my head what happened in 2019. You destroy this team twice on the road, so much so they go into the draft and they draft three backups. Um, I have zero respect for the Packers, and that could come back and you know bite me in the butt because they were in the NFC Championship. They have Aaron Rodgers. There's no reason why they can't be good. It's just they match up so poorly with the 49ers, and they did nothing to adjust that. Uh, this is going to be a Thursday night game. So even if the Seattle Seahawks, let's just say hypothetically, the 49ers lose to the Seahawks week eight, well, guess what? You got a short week <laughs> because you got a Thursday night football game at home. You get to turn around quick and you get to go do something. And also another thing that I thought was interesting about week nine versus the Packers, they're playing their division opponent, the Vikings, uh, the week before as well. So we're playing the Seahawks week eight. Packers are playing the Vikings. Then we meet up both on a short week. So no team really has any type of advantage. Maybe the 49ers because they're home. But um, I, I think that's going to be a fun game. Uh, I'm not too worried about that. I think that the line for betting for week nine will be uh, pretty close to even. Uh, I'm going to make some money that week. I'm, gonna, I'm telling you right now, I'm putting a pretty big uh, bet down already on that game. We'll just have to see what happens. Then week 10. Right after that, the Saints travel to the Saints. This is the second toughest game on the schedule. The Saints are my number one power ranked team. I have basically the 49ers Saints. They're 1A, 1B. Um, but the Saints are tough. Their roster is it's stacked. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest with you. They actually improved their roster from 2019. Uh, they're better now. They're a lot better now. And so this is going to be a fun one. And two, the Saints match up really well with the 49ers. We saw the shootout. I think it was the game of the year last year. Um, and that's week 10. So that's Sunday, uh, November 15th at 125. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, I'll say this too. The 49ers get three extra days. Uh, this it's, it's really because we play week nine, we play the Packers. And we, so that's a Thursday night game. So we get an extra three days before the Saints. So we get 10 days to prepare for the Saints. They only get seven. And then we have a bye week right after the Saints. So we go with uh, 10 days off, play a game, two weeks off. 
So if we could just get <laughs> to week nine healthy, then I think great things are going to happen because, again, 10 days off is a lot whenever you look at the NFL. you Players hate Thursday night games, but Kyle Shanahan's been on the record saying a lot of times, hey, we, we're fine with Thursday night games, and it sucks whenever you're preparing that week, but afterwards, that 10-day rest, it's like a mini bye week. So you get a 10-day break, you play the Saints, you get a two-week break. So that's kind of the big thing there, and really, really excited about that. So that brings us to our bye. Week 11 bye, we like week 11 byes. Week 4 bye sucks. Last year we saw that. That was awful. The team was dying for a bye, and they got it because they got the number one seed. Uh, but this bye week is going to be huge. And before we break down the second part of the season, got a quick word from our sponsor. Here we go. All right, guys, here's the deal. If you're looking to last longer, go a few extra rounds, here's what you need to do. Go to BlueChew.com. BlueChew.com has the first ever chewable that brings your performance into the bedroom to another level. So they've got the same active ingredient uh, as Vi Viagra and Cialis, so you know that they work. And since they're chewables, they work faster. So um, you can take them anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach. They work faster. They're chewable. What is not to like? And here's the deal. You don't have to have any awkward uh, interaction with anybody. They have an online physician. And so what you do is you just answer a couple questions. They're going to help you pair up with what works best for you. And here's the deal. They're going to ship it straight to your door in a very discreet package. So you don't have to even let people inside your house know that you're using it. If you're worried about that, who checks them out? It doesn't matter because, again, very discreet packaging. Um, you don't have to worry about any type of embarrassment or any of those things. So here's what you've got to do. Head over to BlueChew.com, and you're going to get your first order for free whenever you use our promo code BLUEWIRE. Again, one word, blue like the color wire. Uh, it's $5 shipping for your first order to make sure it works, that you like it. After that, you're going to be taken care of. So again, BlueChew.com, just want to say thank you to them for their support of the podcast. Head over there and use the promo code BLUEWIRE. All right, so now we're back at it. So as we said, we got week 11 by. And we've already played our first toughest. We've already played our second toughest game at the Seahawks, at the Saints. And I don't think anybody, no matter what, everybody has those as the two toughest games, period, for the 49ers. Now, they can win both of them. In fact, they won at the Saints last year, and they won at Seattle last year. So it, there's definitely some things that you can take from this schedule, and you're like, man, this just seems like a better schedule. Now, I will say this. You know, from week 12 to 17, the last, what is that, six games for the 49ers, there's not any, like, huge, like, oh, my gosh. And there's not really a lot of easy ones either. There's one easy one packed in there. But uh, let's, let's continue through this. Week 12, you go to L.A. at the Los Angeles Rams. Um, again, I have zero respect for the Rams. I just don't respect them. Uh, <laughs> I feel like a Rod Rodney Dangerfield somewhere. It's like, come on. They get no respect, uh, but they don't deserve it. And especially whenever their fans can't even fill up half of their stadium uh, whenever it's a home game. You know, if you if you have never been to an L.A. Rams game, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun because the new stadium this year. But they always play the drop, whose house? And it's not their house. Yeah, they, they have signs up, but they have to take them down because that's a college team stadium. Uh, but we'll see what happens. I have no respect for these guys. Um, it's I have no respect. Now, it, this is the 10th ranked game for me, 10th toughest. Uh, again, 20th power ranking for the Rams. Now, another thing that's interesting for me, the week before, the Rams play, um, what's it called? The Rams are going to play Monday Night Football before week 12. So they're getting one day less than normal. So they're coming off of six days. They're going to have six days to prepare. 49ers coming off a of bye week, 14 games. Now, their division opponents, which always makes it kind of weird, but good gosh, <laughs> this game, NFL was mean to the Rams. Uh, they shouldn't have done this to them, but I'm going to love every single second of it. Week 13, uh, we go back home you know, from L.A. back. Uh, to San Francisco or Santa Clara. Uh, and we got the Bills, and I think the Bills are a top six team. They are my sixth team power ranking. I have this rated as the seventh most difficult game. The Bills are a tough team. They run the ball. They have great, 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 great defense, and they have a mobile quarterback, but they're very turnover prone. Um, I don't think that their style of play 
will match up very well with the 49ers. I think the 49ers will have a lot of advantages. That's why I have this as the seventh, and it's a home game as well. Um, so that's going to be a Monday night football game. A lot, a lot of fun there. Uh, Bills, you know, very, very good team. I fully expect them to win the AFC East. And um, so, yeah, it got to be a lot of fun. But I just don't think that we they match up very well with us because we do what they want to do just better in every way. We have a better defense than they do. Uh, they want to have a bully defensive line. Nowhere near <laughs> what the 49ers do. They want to run the ball. Guess what? You don't have Kyle Shanahan. Um, so they're good. They just, they're very one-dimensional is what I'm trying to say. Uh, you follow that up with the Redskins come to Santa Clara. This is the easiest game all year. Uh, Redskins are dead last in my NFL power rankings. I have them 32nd. I uh, just don't think they're a good team. Plus, Trent Williams is going to murder half of their team. Uh, while staring into the uh, soulless void that is Dan Snyder. So I, I just don't think that this is probably the easiest game. You, you look at what uh, the Redskins and the 49ers did last year with the crazy, like, what was it, 93-96 game. That was because of the weather. <laughs> I mean, it was just a, a, blood, a mud bowl out there, and nobody could do anything. So it's not going to be like that, uh, you know, whenever they play in December in California. That's not what it's going to be. All right. Last three games. In these three games, it's going to determine first seed, second seed, divisional winners, not just NFC West, but other divisions as well, because we've got at Cowboys, at Cardinals, then at home in the Seahawks. These three games will determine everything. Um, you know, people always ask me, oh, what do you, what, what's your projection? What's your projection? How many wins and losses? Um, and, and anytime I do that, I'm like, you look at a team and there's always those two to four games that could go anyway. Coin flip games. The 49ers had so many last year. And so, like, if I had to predict what the 49ers are going to be, I'd say 13 and three. But the realistic option is they're going to be 12 and four or they're going to be 14 and two in that gap. Now, things could go off the wire and, you know, injuries and all that stuff. But if they play to their potential, and let's say every team in the NFL plays to their potential, and no crazy swings, that's where the 49ers fit. Now, these last three games, they're going to be tough. Uh, the, these, This is the tough stretch right here. So, week 15, you travel to Dallas. Okay, this is Sunday night football game. Uh, the week of Christmas, 5.20 p.m. Sunday night football. And this is the number five. Now, a lot of people, <laughs> I put out my five toughest games, and I, I don't know if it was all Dallas fans or what, but a bunch of people got mad because I had this ranked number five, and everybody's like, no way, that's top three, that's number two, What? I don't, whatever. Maybe the Cowboys are going to be great, and they always do seem to play the 49ers well, but I don't know. <laughs> I just, I'm not too concerned with what they're trying to do. I understand their best player mentality when they draft. They've got all the names in the world. I get it. They just don't win games that count. And it's the fact, if this game, if it was week one, then I'd probably have this as the number two or three game. But the Cowboys just fold. Uh, <laughs> here's, what's, here's what's funny. You know, I was on a podcast last night. Worst Take podcast. A lot of fun, guys. If you want to go check out a podcast, they do all, all football, whatever. Um, and they, the comparison was made to Jimmy Garoppolo to Tony Romo. And I was like, man, you know what? I think that's a great. I think that's perfect. They both play very, very well. But here's what's interesting about those two. Jimmy Garoppolo already has, in one year as starter, as many playoff wins as Tony Romo did in his entire career. <laughs> um, and so whenever you look at the Cowboys, this is not a new thing. They don't do anything when when it matters. They don't do anything in December. And this is going to be close to the end. So I, I just, there's sometimes you look at teams and you can say, man, on paper, I get it. But in the head, they don't have it. Now, they have a new coach, whatever else. I don't care. They're going to have to prove to themselves what winning is like whenever it matters. And nobody on that roster, nobody on that roster has ever done it. Um, so who knows? Uh, maybe McCarthy gets a turnaround there, but I'm just not concerned. Week 16 at the Cardinals. Now, this is an interesting one because this is a TBD game, meaning it can be flexed to that Saturday or Sunday. Uh, we don't know when it's going to be. This is the sixth toughest game, and I want it to be higher. I really wanted, I think this game's going to be tougher than the Cowboys, personally. But, um, you know, take, this is a tough game. 49ers don't play well down there, 
and they play very well against the 49ers there, probably because there's more 49ers fans in their stadium um, or in their state than there are anybody else. So this is their quote-unquote rivalry. I don't think the 49ers see the Cardinals as a rival, but the Cardinals sure as hell see the 49ers as one. So this is going to be a fun game. And then, of course, Week 17 is flipped from last year. Last year, the Seahawks played the 49ers early. Uh, in San Francisco, and then we had to travel to Seattle Week 17. They flipped it. Uh, the only problem I have is that this game, it's scheduled for 125. I don't know why um, it didn't get the night game, but uh, especially after being one of the greatest games, and it's going to be close. You know that last game's going to mean something. Um, so anyway, so that's that's all of them. That's 1 through 17, which... <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a lot. And if you're still with us, I just want to say thank you. We're going to have a real quick word from our sponsor. Then we're going to jump into some Q&A. Uh, let, let's bounce it back and forth on the Hot Mic app and on YouTube and Periscope. Just want to say thanks for listening. Here we go. Let's jump into our uh, sponsor real quick, and then let's get to some questions. <sighs> I just want to give a real quick shout out to our sponsor. I love this. BetOnline.ag. These guys are awesome. They have supported the uh, podcast and all of Blue Wire podcasts for a while now. They are a great company. And here's the deal. With currently no NBA, NHL, MLB, football, whatever. You, there's no sports. We get it. But here's the deal. You can still go out and bet. Um, our exclusive partner, BetOnline.ag, still has hundreds of events games props to wager on from their online casinos to poker blackjack they're bringing vegas to you now uh, if you're missing the nfl um no problem they have live daily every single day madden nfl 20 simulations that you can bet on so you can still bet on tv shows like survivor big brother american idol all those things stock prices religion whatever it doesn't matter you can bet on everything betonline.ag it's open 24 hours a day and it's all online so Head over there. Here's the deal. Use the promo code BLUEWIRE, one word, BLUEWIRE, to join today. Receive your new welcome bonus, betonline.ag, your online wagering solution. Head over there. Sign up now. All right. Welcome back, and let's get to some questions now. We're over on Hot Mike, and then we'll get to YouTube. And here's the deal. Um couple questions. First off comes from Beth. It's not really a question, but I like this. Uh, she says on Hot Mike, I plan on being at the Eagles game. Please, oh, please hope it happens. I, I'm with you. Two of my closest friends, really three of my closest friends. I don't know how this worked out. Maybe I'm just really good at being friends with a-holes. They're Eagles fans. Uh, literally my three closest friends probably. All Eagles fans. And so that game is very, very important to me. I usually have a lot on the line of uh, bragging rights and all those things. So that Eagles game, I'm with you, Beth. Uh, that's a big one. I'm pretty excited about that one. Uh, next question right here. Um, this is off topic. Uh, talking about Joe Staley, and he's saying this kind of lighthearted. This is Nate saying that <laughs> Joe Staley, uh, he retired because he didn't want to go against Nick Bosa every day in practice. Uh, that's awesome. You know, one of the things, Nick Bosa was interviewed this week, and one of the coolest things that he said, and I really think that this is just a testament to how great Joe Staley is, they would meet every day after practice, and Joe Staley would share with Nick Bosa his notes on what happened in practice when they went against each other. And just talk about iron sharpening iron. Um, just so much humility for a guy that's, you know, <laughs> a part of the all-decade team and the greatest old lineman for the 49ers his in 49ers history he, he has so much humility that he shares and that's rare i love the culture i love the climate that was built in that locker room and joe staley is one of the guys that is responsible for that now uh next question this comes from scott and he he, he says this i know it's blasphemous to even say this but it's trent williams an upgrade to joe staley if trent williams and joe staley are both at the top of their game okay then here's the deal. Trent Williams is way better than Joe Staley. And that's not a slight on Joe at all. Joe Staley is so great because he is the textbook definition of consistent, healthy, and determined. Okay, it, it, Whenever you put Joe, here's, Joe Staley's not meant to be an offensive lineman. He wasn't created that way. He's a wide receiver in high school. He got forced to bulk up to play tight end in college, and then he got forced to get bigger uh, moving into the NFL. Uh, Joe Staley even said on my, Matt Mayoko's podcast, uh, he's so excited to just return to normal being. Um, whereas if you look at Trent Williams, guess what? That dude is named Silverback for a damn reason. 
Um, so yeah, I got burned <laughs> in the Trent Williams breakdown podcast. You go if you want to go back and look through the YouTube comments. So many people were upset because <laughs> I never said the line. Trent is better than Joe. Uh, I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to say it. And people were mad. Like, dude, just say it. <laughs> and I was like, I can't say it. Can't say it. Joe's my favorite man. I love Joe. Um. I love Joe. It's what it is. I love you, Joe. Uh, I, I don't. I know you don't listen, but uh, we love you. Uh, it, it is what it is. All right, here we go. Next question. Uh, this is from Wes from Connecticut. What's up, Wes? Uh, what would you consider our trap game? Again, man, that trap game, uh, that New England game, is going to be a major concern. It's early, but that New England game, I don't like where it is because, again, Patriots have that bye week, and then we have at Seattle the next week. It's so hard. You can lose the Patriot game and be just fine. But that Seattle game, it's in the side of your head. Right? It's it, As a 49er, as whatever. Because, again, if you win in Seattle, the division's pretty much, it's almost over at that point, right? At least that's it's it's that mindset. So even though you're preparing for the Patriots, this is where coaching comes into play. you got to focus because if you don't, it's going to be problematic. Uh, it's just where it is. Um, so hopefully that, that answers that there for you. Oh, from Amrito, what's up? Uh, why do you think the West Coast teams are required to travel so much more? Uh, bring those East Coast teams over. Yeah, it, East Coast teams get upset. West Coast teams get upset, but the difference is there's so many more East Coast teams than there are West Coast teams. So just by <laughs> simple logic, that's just the way it is. Uh, the population is larger. The, the cities are – they're all there. And so whenever you look at how many East Coast teams there are, it just happens that way. Um, you know, I really do believe – being in the middle of the country, a team like the Dallas Cowboys or the Kansas City Chiefs, or even if you go up north to the Minnesota Vikings or Green Bay Packers or Chicago Bears, I think they have such a great advantage because, you know, they're always in the middle and they're traveling just one <laughs> one time zone or two time zones with the mountain um, time zone, all those things. It's problematic to be on the East Coast, to be honest with you. It's a disadvantage. You are exactly correct. Uh, but there's just so many more East Coast teams. That's the problem. Uh, next question here from Drew on Hot Mike. Um, what's your new line for the season? Uh, here's the deal. You retired abysmal, and that's special. I know. I, I got it knocked out of me. I got to bring those words back uh, from time to time just because, you know, they carry so much more weight now. So if I say something's abysmal, then I feel like we all know, like, okay, yeah, this this, this is this is for real. <laughs> we we got to be a little bit more concerned about this now. Um, so, yeah, I, I love that. I don't know what my new line is yet, um, but uh, maybe I need to start a poll and let people decide what the new line is for me. So if you guys got any suggestions, hit me up on Twitter, at jail underscore Chapman, for what um, my new line should be. Oh, oh, my goodness, almost forgot. Um, man, we're doing some crazy work behind the scenes. And I know a lot of the listeners for the 49ers Rush podcast are overseas. And here's what we are going to start doing now. Um, I, I need you guys to do some work for me. Um, at 49ers Rush podcast at gmail.com. Here's what I want you to do. If you're a 49ers fan from overseas, okay, so this is just for the faithful from afar. I want you to record a video, just selfie video. And I want you to tell us, here's what I want you to tell us. What your name is, where you're from, and how in the hell you became a 49ers fan. Share your story. I'm trying to put a compilation video of these things together and share and highlight because the 49ers international fan base, it's freaking awesome. Um, so share your story. Email it over, 49ersrushpodcast at gmail.com. Send that over. I want to start to uh, just collect those and cut them up, and I want to put something together. So, again, uh, Faithful from Afar series. We're developing that now. Name, uh, where you're from, and then how the hell you became a 49ers fan. That's what I want to know because it's just awesome. And I have these people emailing me these stories, and I'm just like, I read them, and I'm just like, oh, this is so cool, and I don't know what to do with it. But we're going to try to find a way to share these stories because we have such a unique fan base. The faithful then, faithful now, that's who we are. And so many cool people overseas. So really, really excited about that. Uh, let's jump over to YouTube now. Let's get to some of these questions before we jump off. From Mr. Superfly87, 
Uh, he asked this, how do you think having D Ford helps us play in Seattle? Oh, it's huge. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Russell Wilson, Russell, Wil I, I, that's what, that's what I should call him. Russell Wilson, uh, Russell Wilson. He is, he, he's in my dreams. It, he just dances around so damn much and you build your team to win in the division. And, you know, with the addition of Javon Kinlaw, D Ford, who didn't play much, <laughs> let's be honest, last year, but whenever he played, it mattered. You've got to go get him. If you can hit Russell Wilson, you beat Seattle, period. Now, he always does this stupid crap where he comes back in the fourth quarter, but the more times you hit him, the less effective he's going to be long term. So D Ford is key. And I know a lot of people are ready to already move on from D Ford, but I'm telling you right now, if D Ford is on, this team is the best team in the NFL. We saw what it looked like without D Ford. We saw what we looked like with D Ford. And there's no doubt which team is better. Statistically, everything was up whenever he was in. From every third stroke, uh, he asked this. At least we have longer week before the Saints. Yeah, that's key. Man, that is huge. That Saints game is huge for me. Uh, you know, again, it's the number, it's the second toughest game um, on the schedule, but we get 10 days. We get 10 days. 10 days off before we play them. And again, you know, last year we played, you know, we had all those games in a row where it was Baltimore, Seattle, Packers, Saints, all in a row. Well, guess what? We have the same thing this year. Uh, yeah, at Patriots, at Seahawks, first Packers, at Saints. And so those three games, 8, 9, 10, weeks 8, 9, and 10 at Seattle, at Green Bay, or Green Bay comes to us, and then at the Saints, that's going to determine the pecking order of the, the, the playoffs. And this year, even more so, we won on tiebreakers, right? Because we beat the Saints and we beat the Packers, so that's why we got the one seed last year. Well, guess what? There's a new format in the NFL in the playoffs, and that starts this year. Only the number one seed gets a first-round bye. So even if we finish number two in the NFC, you got to play. <laughs> we saw what could happen. Uh, the Saints saw what could happen, uh, where you got to play a wild card weekend because there's seven teams that make it to the playoffs now in the NFL. And again, only that number one seed gets the bye. So, man, those weeks right there, you want to circle <laughs> what's going to happen to the 49ers this season? Week seven, eight, nine, and 10. That's it. That's where it's going to be. Uh, the second most important chunk is those last three weeks at Cowboys, at Cardinals, versus Seahawks at home. That's what you've got to pay attention to. Um, next up from Barack. Um, oh, man. He, <laughs> yeah. Uh, hates me just as much as I hate him for liking the Seahawks. Well, there you go, Barack. I do not like the Seahawks, but I got you. And, yeah, I know that you love Blue Chew. Uh, I am a big fan myself, and I'm glad that you support that as well, Barack. So just want to say thank you, guys. Goodness, those comments. It's it's fun whenever you don't you read them live because you don't know what you're getting into. And uh, it makes it fun for sure. So that's going to do it for us today. Just want to say thank you. I'm going to leave you guys again uh, just with instructions. Countdown crew is happening. We're already keeping track. Again, if you want to win, all you got to do is hit that alert button. And that's going to do it for us here. Here we go. This will give you the instructions there. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, guys, just want to remind you of the countdown crew. Um, I am trying to find creative ways to give things away <laughs> to the loyal listeners that show up episode in, episode out, doesn't matter when it is. So here's the deal, guys. If you haven't participated in this before, here's what you do. When the countdown starts, okay, whether this is on YouTube, Hot Mic, Periscope, wherever, when the countdown is up, that first 30 seconds before the podcast starts, I need you to start lighting up those comments, okay? And what's going to happen at the end of every month, I'm going to keep track. Whoever gets the most and all those things, I'm going to pick one or two people. I'm going to be giving away T-shirts, uh, 49ers rush gear, stickers, uh, perhaps even uh, let you be jump on the pod, uh, tell people your story, how you became a 49ers fan, something along those lines. But the countdown crew is huge. So again, for our live listeners, make sure you hit subscribe and that notification bell, wherever it is you listen, 
And again, that first 30 seconds, that's the countdown crew. I need you guys in there. I need you to bring in energy because I feed off that. And I think usually whenever we have shows with a lot of people on early, those are always my favorite uh, podcasts to do. So I need your help. Uh, the countdown crew, again, get some free stuff. And I'm going to be sending that out to you. For those of you that do listen traditional podcast ways, I understand you don't have a way to do that. Um, but I'm going to try to find some new creative ways to get you guys active in that as well. And again, I got I got a lot of stuff I got to give away. So so help us out there. That is the Countdown Crew. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. Thank you guys so much.